Today I'm going to show you how to customize your frame or motion animations at different media breakpoints using only Tailwind CSS. And we're going to be working with this little modal demo, which comes from Tailwind UI. Now I've already gone ahead and wired up frame or motion. So you can see we're using the static version of the dialog control with animate presence. So we have our mount and unmount animations defined here. And here we see the overlay. It goes from opacity zero to opacity one. And down here we see the panel which also fades in, but also has a bit of scale to it. And we can see that uh, when we toggle it right here. So pretty cool, pretty easy to wire up frame or motion with Tailwind UI components. I love using frame or motion for animation and uh, this looks and works great. But if we pop over to Tailwind UI, we're gonna see that they added a really nice detail to this simple alert component. And uh, you can see here it has you know a similar behavior. It's fading in and zooming in the middle. But if I were to actually shrink this down to the mobile treatment, we'll see that the panel moves to the bottom of the screen, but the animation changes as well. And when the dialogue is shown, it comes up from the bottom. And then when it's closed, it goes back down and there's no scaling going on here. Uh, but when we're on a large screen, we see a bit of scale and we don't have that vertical movement anymore. So the treatment for the animation here uh, is actually different based on the different media breakpoints. And if we look at the code and we come down to the transition component that they're using, we can see what's happening right here. On small screens, we are entering from a 16 pixel offset and we're entering to a zero pixel offset. That's that vertical movement. But then once we get to the small breakpoint, uh, we reset this to zero so that there's no vertical movement. And instead we use scale and we set scale to 95% and then 100%. And the opacity is there for both of those treatments. So uh, whenever I run into this, it's always kind of a question about how best to do this in frame or motion, because now we are in React JavaScript land, uh, which doesn't really have access to the media breakpoints in the same way that CSS does. And so your first instinct here might be to reach for something like a use media query hook. And I've used this before. And maybe you say something like, uh, if we find out what SM corresponds to here, we can see that SM is 640 pixels. So now we have to come up here, duplicate this, something like men with 640 pixels, then we get an is small, something like that. And then you come down here and this is possible. We could say something like if we're small, then uh, we'll keep the scale alone. Otherwise we'll set it to 90%. And that's a way we could customize this, but this is kind of a bummer. We have to, you know, redefine the media query here. We can't just use tailwind. And uh, there's also sometimes issues with this and server side rendering. So today I'm going to show you exactly how we can pull this off uh, without using any hook or any new JavaScript code actually at all. And that is, if we go ahead and undo this, it turns out that Framer Motion is able to animate not just between JavaScript primitives here, but also between CSS variables. So if I were to set uh, this to a variable, let's say scale from, and this is scale two, and we were to set these CSS variables, Framer Motion would be able to use them to trigger its animation. And now here is the missing trick. We can use Tailwind to set CSS properties. And by doing so, we can also use Tailwind's responsive prefixes like SM, all of these things to update those CSS variables values at different media breakpoints. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Let's first just refactor this to only use CSS variables so we can see how it works. And then we'll see how to set them with Tailwind so that we can apply responsive treatments. So the easiest way to set CSS properties uh, right from our JSX here is with the style prop. And uh, we can say scale from is 0.8 and scale to is one. And uh, TypeScript is gonna give us an error here unless we type this as CSS properties. So if we save this and we give it a shot, uh, it doesn't quite work. And this is because we need to give frame or motion a little bit more information about the units uh, of these values here, since now they're being represented in CSS. So uh, instead of 0.8 as a pure number, uh, let's go ahead and make this 80% and make this 100%. 
And now if we try it out, we're gonna see our scaling effect is back. So that's kind of the first trick you need to remember when you're doing this. Um, frame or motion can't infer the type of transform it needs to apply to the DOM and to CSS from the JavaScript types because we're no longer working with JavaScript types right here. These are being set as CSS variables in the DOM in the browser and then frame of motion is gonna read from them. But that's kind of what enables this whole trick to begin with. So just remember to always put the unit here uh, when using CSS variables. So let's do the same thing for opacity and we'll call this opacity from and opacity to. And we'll go ahead and set these as well. Opacity from goes from zero to 100 and now everything is being controlled uh, with our CSS properties. So this is pretty cool. We have our animation being driven from CSS properties, but how can we customize these for different media breakpoints? Well, if we were writing a CSS file, we could do that, but with the inline style tag, there's no way to do that. But fortunately, this is exactly where Tailwind comes in. With Tailwind, we can actually define properties using arbitrary value syntax, and then we can define new properties using the responsive breakpoints. So let's go ahead and refactor this to set the variables from Tailwind. And you might have seen uh, Tailwind's arbitrary syntax before. It looks kind of like this. Uh, right here, we're setting the background of our modal to white, but let's say we wanted to change this and make this something like the hex code 333, right? This square bracket syntax here is how you set arbitrary values uh, in Tailwind for a given rule, but we can use arbitrary properties and write any CSS we want in here at all. So we could say background color is green and check that out, it works. And so this is how we can define CSS properties like scale from to be 80%. So uh, let's get rid of that. Let's get our background of white back. And there we see the scaling is back and let's just make it zero for fun and it should be scaling a lot more now. So you can see we are in fact defining the CSS variable from Tailwind. In fact, if we were to come over here and find this element in the inspector, here we see the inline style setting the variables. But if we were to scroll down, we're gonna see our fun little arbitrary property rule, which is just serving to set the CSS variable. So very cool. Let's go ahead and add scale two. We'll make that 100% and we'll make this 80% again. And we'll also set opacity from to 0%. And we'll go ahead and grab that and set 2 to 100%. And we should be able to get rid of this entire style prop, save this, and everything should work just like before. Okay, here comes the fun part. We have two customizations to make based on the screen size. And if we go back to uh, Tailwind UI, we can see that at the small screen, we want this to come up from the bottom and then move down a little bit. And at the large screen size, we want the scale, but we don't want the scale at the small and we don't want the movement at the large. So uh, first, let's go ahead and make this smaller so that we get that mobile treatment. And here we can already see the scale kind of feels strange uh, when it's at the bottom like that. So how might we apply these rules only once we get to the small breakpoint? Well, just like with any Tailwind utility, we can prefix this with SM. Check this out. No scaling going on at all, but once I make this bigger, we get our scale back. How cool is that? On screen sizes smaller than 640 pixels, this variable uh, is not even defined. There's no value. And so this is gonna be undefined and frame or motion is just gonna ignore the scale property altogether. Now, uh, to be good citizens and kind of make this a little bit more predictable, I usually like giving these a default uh, just because of the way sometimes frame or motion composes these different properties together. It's nice to have a value instead of undefined, uh, even though undefined works in this case. And uh, this way, kind of on small screens, if I save that and we reload just to check this, we're still basically animating from one to one for the scale, which is fine. It's not uh, having an effect, but once we get to the bigger screen here, uh, we can see that our little responsive arbitrary property takes effect. So cool, so easy, no hooks. It's robust to server-side rendering. Uh, the initial render uh, will have knowledge of this. Sometimes in Framer Motion, you have 
initial mount animations. I have them disabled up here because um, it doesn't really make sense for this case of the modal. But uh, having all of this in CSS available for the first paint is an awesome uh, aspect of this solution. We didn't have to install any libraries. We didn't have to use JavaScript to measure anything. Absolutely love it. So let's get the last little piece of it working here, which is when we open this, we want this to come up from the bottom. And the way we can do that is with the Y property. So let's add a new variable here, Y from and Y to. And uh, we'll add a new arbitrary property here right at the beginning. And we'll say Y from, let's say 16 pixels. And uh, we'll throw this one down here, Y2, we'll bring it back to zero. And now, check that out. Little slide up, it's a little subtle. We can make it 32 if we wanted to. Little more dramatic, pretty nice. And uh, we got that nice little frame or motion bounce going on there. And now when we make this bigger, we get the center treatment. And if I dismiss this, you'll see it's actually still going down, right? If I were to make this even bigger, you could see it. Uh, we have both the scale and the Y, but we want to kind of reset the Y back to zero, zero, so that it doesn't have any vertical movement on this large treatment. So we could come here and do something like SM and then set the Y from to be zero pixels. And uh, that should actually take care of it, which it does. But an even cooler way to do this is to use the max width responsive prefixes. So uh, check this out. If I were to add max SM and we take a look at the rule that Tailwind is generating for us here, this is using not to kind of invert the standard mobile first responsive prefixes. And uh, that is gonna only set this rule if we're below 640 pixels. So if we save this, we should have exactly the same result. Uh, but we don't, and uh, that is because I forgot to add the defaults here. So let's add the fallback values for our Y. This is kind of what I was mentioning earlier. And let's just make sure this works. There we go. We've got our scaling back. And when we go to a small screen size, it looks like we're getting a bit of scroll bar uh, whenever we do this. And I think that's because this is a little bit too big. Let's go back to 16 pixels and that looks like it takes care of it. So uh, these fallback values, again, they're important for the reasons we just saw, it makes this more predictable. Sometimes these things are composed together with the transform property, and uh, if there's no fallback value or doesn't have the right unit, it might not work. And so uh, that's just something to keep in mind. But with this, we are able to set the Y from and to on small screens, and only on small screens. And then once we get to 640, uh, we get to set the scale property. And let's take a final look here. We're on the small screen. We see it coming up from the bottom and going down. Everything's fading in. And when I make it bigger, we've got no movement in the Y direction and we've got our scaling back. And again, I think this is cool for so many reasons. You don't have to redefine or look up the screen sizes from your Tailwind config to use them in JavaScript somehow. You don't need to use a hook at all or wait for your page to render to measure something and see what the screen size is. And because we're not using CSS transitions, when we resize between these two, uh, we don't have any layout shift. We don't have any recalculation or transitions going on because uh, there's no transitions classes on our markup here. So that's just another little benefit. Uh, frame or motion only animates when the state actually changes, but because everything's driven by CSS here from a layout perspective, we can change the screen size and uh, there's no flashing, there's no animation at all. So I absolutely love this solution. This was a little tip I got from Adam Wathen, the creator of Tailwind and Tailwind UI. And uh, it just shows you how powerful these arbitrary properties are. You can do all sorts of cool things with them, but this is the latest one I'm really jazzed about. So I hope you liked that and learned something. If you want to learn more Tailwind, you haven't done a lot with it yourself, uh, I have a course over on Build UI that I released uh, this summer, and uh, it teaches you how to learn Tailwind from scratch. We do stuff with arbitrary properties and values. We do all sorts of cool stuff. So if you want to dive deeper into Tailwind, check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. Otherwise, I'll leave a link to this demo uh, in the description as well. That's all I got for you today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week.